<laughs> Very good. <laughs> that is really <laughs> dog and fox. <laughs> Genius. <laughs> G'day everyone, welcome back to the first and only maths channel on YouTube, McGrathematics. Today we're starting off with a flashback from the 2015 HSC Advanced Maths Exam. Probability that Mel's soccer team wins this weekend is 5 sevenths. The probability that our rugby team wins is 2 thirds. Which of these four options is the probability that neither of her teams win this weekend? Pause the video and decide which one you would be opting for. Okay, so we need to have uh, Mel's teams both losing. So we want to find the probability of one team losing and then the other team losing. The way we find the probability of successive events uh, is we multiply their probabilities together. So if Mel has a 5 in 7 chance of winning with her soccer team, she has a 2 in 7 chance of losing. Likewise, her rugby team has a 1 in 3 chance of losing. So to answer this question, all we need to do is 2 sevenths multiplied by 1 third so this is lose times lose, or this is lose and lose. Multiplying these together, we get two times one is two, and seven times three is 21. So there is our correct answer of A, two out of 21. Well done if that was your pick. Okay, we are all finished with our arithmetic sequences and series. Today we are looking at the other type of patterns that we study in advanced maths, which are called geometric sequences and geometric series. So a progression is arithmetic if between each of your terms you are adding the same number. That's what we looked at in the last couple of videos. For a progression to be geometric, it means that you are multiplying by the same number each time. So in this example of a geometric sequence, to get from one term to the next, we are always multiplying by five. Okay, we have a consistent multiplier, so it makes it a geometric sequence. Likewise, here's an example of a geometric series where we are adding the terms together. We can see to get from one term to the next, uh, the size of the number is being cut in half and the sign is changing from negative to positive. This tells me that between each term, we are multiplying by a negative a half. Okay, 48 multiplied by negative a half gets you negative 24. Multiply by negative a half again and you get positive 12. Okay, sometimes if it's too hard to see what your multiplier is, you can just be clever and you can work backwards and do negative 24 divided by 48, and you'll get an answer of minus one half. Just like in arithmetic sequences and series, we represent the first term of the sequence with A. However, instead of D being our common difference between terms, we're using R to represent our common ratio between terms, or what I'm gonna be referring to as the consistent multiplier between terms. Okay, so still A, but using R instead of D for a geometric progression. Okay, it's taking a look at how we could um, form a formula to find the nth term in a geometric progression. So we start off with our first term being of course a. Now to get from the first term to the second term, we are multiplying by our constant multiplier, which we said is r. So a times r will be our second term, multiply by r again and we get our third term. So t3 equals a r to the two. The pattern we should start to see forming here is that the relationship between the power of the R and the term of the sequence is always one less. Okay, so T3 is AR to the three minus one. From this, we can get our generic formula, which is the nth term of a geometric progression is the first term multiplied by the common ratio um, N minus one times. As always, this is on your formula sheet. You just need to know what the A and the R and the T stand for, and you're good to go. All right, let's dive into a few examples, starting off with some um, finding the unknown terms in geometric sequences. All right, in this first one, so we know whatever is multiplying from two to get to minus 10, that's gonna be the same thing we'll multiply to get to A and then get to B. Okay, so to get from two to 10, we're multiplying by five. Because our sign is changing, we must be multiplying by negative five. So that's, what, that's our common multiplier, which we're gonna call R. Now to get to A, we take negative 10 and we multiply by negative five. So A must be positive 50. If we multiply by negative five one more time, we'll get our value of B, which is negative 250. Okay, question B is a bit trickier. We've got three and then something and then 15 and something. All right, so the way we're gonna think about this is there's something multiplying three that turns it into A. And then if we multiply by the same thing, we get to 15. 
Once again, that thing that's multiplying, we're going to represent with a lowercase r. So we can say 3 times r times r again will get us 15. Okay, this is 3 multiplying two more terms gets us an answer of 15. If we divide both sides of this equation by 3, we get r squared is equal to 5. That must mean that r is the square root of 5, but because we're squaring it, um, it could be positive or negative. So there's technically two possible values for r in this progression. Okay, now we have our value for r, we can multiply 3 by this value and get our answer for a. Then we can multiply 15 by our r value and that will get us b. So a is going to be 3 times plus or minus root 5, which is just here. Looks a bit messy, but anyway. And 15 multiplied by plus minus root 5 gets us our term b, which comes immediately after 15. Okay, for our next one, we want to use our nth term formula to write an expression for the nth term of this geometric sequence. Okay, so first thing we need to figure out is we know our a, our starting point is 1000. We need to figure out what our multiplier is. What are we multiplying 1000 by that turns it into negative 100? Okay, some people can't see that straight away, which is fine. So like I said, we can work backwards and we can do uh, divided by. So our starting term is 1000. If we do negative 100 divided by 1000, this simplifies into negative 1 tenth. Okay, so 1000 multiplied by negative 1 tenth gets us negative 100. There is our constant multiplier. Now we have our a and we have our r and we have our nth term formula from our reference sheet. We can substitute in the values. We're leaving n as n because we're trying to get a generic expression in terms of n. So we have the nth term is a multiplied by, in brackets, negative 1 tenth to the power of n minus 1. There is our expression for the nth term of the geometric series. Okay, for our next one, um, we are trying to see whether 1200 is a term in this geometric sequence. Okay, um, just like to say straight up that I know a lot of the questions we are working through today can technically be solved through trial and error. I'm not going to use any trial and error because I'm not a little bitch. I'm going to use the actual mathematical process that is covered in this course. Okay, so if you leave a comment saying, oh, I did this question in two seconds, I honestly don't care. So save your time. All right, so now that we've done that, we can say our first term in the series is two. We can see that our multiplier between each terms is eight because two times eight is 16. Now we have our nth term for a geometric sequence. We have our a and our r. We are trying to see if the left-hand side of this equation, which is the term, can this ever be equal to 1,200? So we have the left-hand side is 1,200. We have two times eight to the power of n minus one. Now, what we are trying to see is whether this equation will have a solution for n that is a whole number, okay? Because remember, to be a term in the sequence, n needs to be an integer, okay? You can't have a 2.5 term in the sequence. It doesn't really make sense. So our goal now is to solve this equation for n. To do this properly, we need to be using logarithms, which we have already learned, and hopefully we're starting to get a bit more confident with them. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is divide both sides by two to get rid of the times two. So we have eight to the n minus one is equal to 600. Now to get this n out of the power of the eight, I need to cancel out eight to the power of, so I do the inverse operation of that, which is log base eight. So now I'm taking both sides of the equation and doing log base eight, okay? Because log base eight and eight to the power of, these guys just cancel each other out and leave you with n minus one on the left-hand side. On the right hand side, to compute log base eight of 600, we need to use our change of base formula because our calculators can't really do base eight. So to enter the right hand side into your calculator, you need to write log 600, which is really log base 10 of 600, divided by log base 10 of eight. If that makes absolutely no sense to you, I have a video on my channel called Logarithm Laws where I go through this in more detail. Anyway, entering this into a calculator gets us an answer of around 3.076, which means n, if we add the one across, will be around 4.076. All right, because we are not getting a whole number answer for n, like I said, it's not a number in the sequence. So this means that no, 1200 is not going to be a term in this sequence. And there's our mathematical proof, solving for n. All right, up next, um, similar idea, we have which term of the series is equal to 2 over 2, 4, 3. We have a geometric sequence. We want to find which number in the sequence. So once again, we're trying to solve for n. 
which number in the sequence of the series will be equal to two out of two, four, three. Okay, first thing to identify is of course our value of A is 54. Now we have to think about what we are multiplying 54 by that turns it into 18. Again, if you can't figure that out, you just work backwards and you do 18 divided by 54. You should get a value of one third. Okay, 54 times one third will get you 18. All right, we have our A, we have our R, and we have our nth term formula. So once again, we are gonna set our term equal to two over two, four, three, and we are going to solve for N. All right, so we have A is 54, so 54 times one third to the power of N minus one is equal to the term, which is two over two, four, three. All right, dividing both sides by 54 gets us on the right-hand side, one over six, five, six, one, on the left, we now just have the third to the power of n minus one. Now, a quick shortcut we can take here is we're essentially gonna take both sides of this equation and flip them upside down. We know one to the power of anything is always gonna get us one. So the tops we don't really care about, we actually care about the bottom. We wanna know three to the power of what gets us six, five, six, one. So that's what I'm gonna write next. The bottom to the power of n minus one is equal to the bottom over the right-hand side. Now again, we have an exponential equation to solve. I wanna get the n minus one out of the power of the three. So to do that, I should take log base three of both sides. The left-hand side will turn into n minus one because these two operations cancel out. And over on the right, we are gonna enter this into our calculator, once again, using the change of base formula. Log base 10 of 6561, which on your calculator just says log. So what you're seeing here is what you need to type into your calculator assuming you're using the same calculator as my class, which is a Casio. All right, if we uh, calculate this, we get a value of eight. If we add the one across, we get a value of nine. So that tells us that the ninth term in this um, geometric series will be two out of two, four, three. There we go, question solved. Okay, up next is a question that I encourage you to pause and have a go at yourself because it's, um, it's nothing too far from what we've just done in the last four examples. It's a very nice and easy geometric series or sequence, pardon me. I want you to find the 10th term. I want you to find whether 472 is a number in this sequence without using trial and error. And then find the first term in the sequence, which is bigger than 5,000. See how you go. I'm about to go through my solution. Okay, so we can see our A value is clearly two and we are clearly multiplying by three to get between each of our terms. So to find our 10th term, we're gonna take our nth term formula and sub in a value of N as equal to 10. A is two, R is three to the power of 10 minus one gets us a value of 39,366. Okay, so a pretty straightforward question with a pretty straightforward sequence. Question B, is 472 a number in this sequence? So we are using our nth term formula. We are trying to see if this formula can spit out a value of 472. Once again, subbing in our values for A and R as two and three, power is N minus one. Once again, we have an exponential equation to solve. So for the third time today, we're going to divide both sides by two. We're gonna take log base three of both sides. So the left-hand side will just turn into N minus one. On the right-hand side, we're gonna enter log of 236 over log of three into our calculator. This gets us a decimal value of 4.97 roughly. All I care about is the fact that this is not a whole number. So if I add one to it, I'll get about 5.97, which is close to a whole number, but not quite there. So if N is not a whole number, that means that 472 is not a number in this sequence. So the answer is no. All right, for question C, we're trying to find which term in the sequence is going to be larger than 5,000. So here is our nth term of the sequence formula. Once again, A is two, R is three, and we're trying to find the value of N, which makes this greater than 5,000. So once again, solving another quick little exponential equation, we're going to divide both sides by two. We're gonna take log base three of both sides. So we know the left-hand side is going to turn into N minus one. The right-hand side will turn into log base three of 2,500. We'll feed this through the, through the calculator and we'll add one and we get an answer of roughly around 8.12. Okay, now you don't wanna round down here because if the value was eight, the value would be less than 5,000. So for a question like this, where you're trying to exceed some value, 
we're going to round this number up and say if it's the 8.12 is where we start to go over 5,000, that's going to mean it's the ninth term where we are bigger than 5,000. Okay, so don't round down. You've got to round up for this question. Okay, up next, we're looking at a band 4 HSC question from the 2014 exam. Multiple choice question, which of these four expressions is a term in this geometric sequence? Okay, if you're feeling confident, please pause the video and have a go before I um, spoil it for you right now. Okay, geometric series, we can pretty clearly see that the value of a is 3x. Now, to get from 3x to negative 6x squared, we are multiplying by negative 2 and we're also multiplying by x. That tells me my value of a is 3x and my value of r, which is my multiplier, is equal to minus 2x. Now we can see each term in this series um, corresponds with its power of x. So looking at our four options, I know we're going to be trying to look for either the 10th or the 11th term in the series. So let's use our nth term formula. Let's calculate the 10th term. And if that doesn't work, we'll have to do the 11th term. Okay, so t t10 is equal to our a is 3x multiplied by in brackets minus 2x to the power of 9. Okay, if we calculate the numbers, we get negative 1, 5, 3, 6. We have x times x to the 9, so we have x to the power of 10. All right, we can see our coefficient is clearly not 3072, so it's not the 10th term, so it's not a or b. It must be c or d. All right, let's have a look at our 11th term, so we'll do t11. 3x multiplied by negative 2x all to the power of 10. The number works out to be positive 3072, and then x times x to the 10 is x to the 11. So well done. If you chose option C, you got the question correct. Okay, finishing off with a challenge question. So we have the second term of a geometric progression is negative 24. The fifth term is equal to 3. Find the ninth term. All right, I'm going to be taking a couple of um, clever shortcuts in this one that you're welcome to take as long as you have correct working out. You're always going to get full marks for a question like this. Okay, to get from the second term to the fifth term in a geometric series, that must mean we are multiplying by r three separate times. Okay, if we take out the second term of negative 24, if we multiply it by r, we get our third term again gets our fourth term, and multiplying by r three times is going to get us the fifth term in the series, which is three. So by starting off here, we have a pretty simple equation that we can solve for r, and then we'll be on the right track to finding the ninth term. All right, we get negative 24 r cubed is equal to three. I'm now going to divide both sides by minus 24. So r cubed is equal to three over negative 24. This fraction works out to be negative one eighth. All right, so to fit, uh, figure out r, I'm just going to take the cube root of negative 1 over 8, which works out to be negative 1 half. So there is our consistent multiplier in our geometric progression. Okay, now another sneaky shortcut. We have the fifth term, and we're trying to find the ninth term. So a shortcut we can take is take our fifth term and multiply by our value of r another four times, and we'll go sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth term. Okay, so our ninth term is our fifth term multiplied by our value of r four times. So it's a little bit quicker than using the formulas on this particular question. Fifth term is three. Our value of r is negative one half. We're doing this four times. So we have the power of four. Gets us an answer of three out of 16 for our ninth term. If you got the same thing, congratulations. That's a pretty tough question that you can make easier by setting up a couple of clever equations. Okay, that's it for geometric sequences. Up next on the channel will be geometric series. Thanks heaps for watching. Catch you in the next one.